Hey, hey YouTubers, what's going on? Welcome back. Thank you for stopping by. My name is JC and this is the Cuban Redneck DIY channel where we do cooking and grilling on Tuesdays and DIY stuff on Fridays. Welcome back to the garage. And if you are looking for uh, recipes, please do me a favor. Click on the title of the channel where you will find multiple dedicated playlists to all cooking recipes. So if you've been on my channel before, you've probably seen me use my Harbor Freight El Cheapo uh, Mito Saw. Uh, a lot of people criticize, uh, you know, oh, you know, the Bosch has one with extended arm that doesn't have any depth. Uh, I don't need a $600 Mito saw, to be honest with you, and I, I doubt that a lot of people do. Uh, anyways, uh, a lot, I got a lot of kudos on the uh, stand for the table saw, and I decided to build one for the Mito saw in kind of a similar fashion. I want it to be mobile and not necessarily mobile, but at least be able to take it outside if I'm cutting MDF or something like that. Um, I'm also, uh, I would like it to be multiple function. I would like it to be uh, perhaps the same height as this so that I can run, uh, you know, eight foot uh, pieces of lumber. And, um, I want it to be just more than a uh, mito saw stand. I want it to be more like a mito saw station with you know wings, so you can cut uh, low material, have a stopper on there, and things of that nature. Uh, I have some ideas in my head, but I really don't have a plan. Uh, I hope this is of interest. So check this out. For materials, I'm going to default to my favorite El Cheapo 2x3 studs from Lowe's. For the balance, I'm going to use some scraps of 3 quarter inch plywood I have laying around. This probably accounts for about a half to 3 quarters of a 2x4 sheet of plywood, and that might suffice. As far as wheels, I have one of these old lawnmower wheels laying around, and I found an almost identical match of Harbor Freight. I wonder what Toro is buying their wheels. For the front, I'm going to use these adjustable legs. These have also been laying around for a while and it's time to use them. The legs are going to go in the front and the wheels in the back. I'm going to give the wheels about an inch and a half of clearance from the floor. And this will come back to haunt me a little bit later. That is because the legs are barely two inches long. Before we go over to the drill press, I want to address uh, an issue that we need to talk about. And uh, that is the bolt. You can't just, uh, this is the bolt that I purchased to hold the wheels in place. As you can see, uh, they fit in there pretty snug. Uh, however, we can't just make a, a hole and put a metal bolt into the wood, especially white pine like this, because that, after you put weight on it, and the, wood, the saw weighs about 25 pounds, uh, it's gonna oval that hole. So the normal thing to do would be to put a washer and what you do is you make two little holes and you kind of sink those holes and you fix the washer uh, permanent so that it gives the, the bolt a boundary uh, to run around with. Uh, the issue with half an inch, uh, half inch washers is that they are too loose and they really, you know, we really haven't accomplished much if we have that much play. So what I ended up doing is purchasing some uh, smaller ones. These are 3 8 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill them to the exact uh, dimension, the same uh, thickness of the shaft. That way we get a nice fit and uh, the wheels will last uh, a lot longer. Let's check this out.
All right, so one of the issues about using this really cheap $3 junk wood is that they're usually uh, full of cracks and stuff. And uh, these things need to be addressed, otherwise they will just get worse over with time. Especially when we are going to be putting this uh, feet uh, on the green side of the legs. So to fix that, one of the, uh, you know, the easiest way I know how to fix it is to grab a thin sheet of uh, quarter inch plywood and uh, put an end cap on it, glue that, and then use the router with a flush bit, clean it all around. Uh, and that will give that will keep the wood from degrading and from continuing to split. I'm going to assemble the miter saw stand in the same fashion as I did the tool shed. What I mean by that is I'm going to pre-drill and bore half inch holes to hide the screws. I will then plug them with dowels. After getting all my holes drilled, I cut some jigs out of pieces of scrap to hold the cross members in place while I secure them. As far as the deck is concerned, I made the assembly complicated for no reason. That is because I decided to use the cutoffs from the wings, which are only 18 inches, instead of the 20 plus required to bridge the deck from front to back. At first, I thought of using dowels, but I opted for a piece of 3 quarter inch scrap to make a step where the deck board will rest. Alright guys, so I was ready to put in the deck, I ran into a little bit of an issue. Um, I was going to skip it, not even bother it, like it did not exist. But I figure if people are going to be using this cheap wood, uh, more than likely they're going to run into the same issue. So uh, if we put the deck uh, flat against the back, we have about a quarter of an inch gap there. And uh, the same thing on this side. So the whole thing has to come this way. Uh, now, one thing about this cheap wood is that they are flexible, uh, especially if this is not secure yet. So, uh, how do we get around to this? So, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, an insert here um, so that these things cannot flex, uh, you know, change in distance from front to rear. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fix them uh, permanent uh, to the front stud, which is right now just being held with a clamp. So the objective is that when I slide it into place, it's going to force everything into place. Once we screw it together, what we'll do is we'll just spray it uh, with alcohol and let it out in the sun. And hopefully, uh, and I say hopefully, uh, it will get back to shape. So check this out.
with the deck of the miter saw in place, we can now work on the wings. As before, I'm going to rig up a jig to facilitate the assembly. By clamping a piece of scrap on the outright, the horizontal plane or axis of the hinge is defined. We can now drill it and secure the hinge into the miter saw stand. With that out of the way, we can move on to the wings itself. And by employing the same approach, we can get the same results. This time, I'm going to flip the piece of scrap the long way to define the edge or boundary of the upright. One of the things that is a little bit different is that I'm just going to mark it, then flip the board, pre-drill it, and then install it. With both winds installed, we can now install our holding stick, which is kind of simple, just nothing but a stick and a hinge. Uh, I am using, if you notice here, a 116 aluminum L, and that is to give it a little bit of a gap so it's not rubbing onto the vertical upright, and uh, pretty straightforward part of the installation. All right, guys, so after securing the saw uh, to the stand with uh, quarter, uh, quarter 20 bolts, uh, I use flat heads so they have uh, the conical shape would lined up the saw. Uh, it has truss washers and nylon uh, nuts on the bottom. And uh, now we have to deal with the wings. Uh, as you can see, due to the gap that we have on the hinge, they don't align perpendicular to the body. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut two birds on one stone. I'm going to rip a one by two to this here, which is just a hair over one inch. Uh, that's going to serve two purposes. It's going to give us um, an edge for the plywood and it's going to keep our wings uh, perpendicular to the miter saw stand. All right guys, so pretty much done for the day. Uh, as much as I can do, I, uh, I am missing some parts. I ordered uh, a T-track for the back to hold a stopper. I also ordered one of those stick-on tapes uh, to have a reference to the blade on both sides. Uh, that's not gonna be here for another week or so. Uh, the winds came out pretty good. I definitely think that the one by two on the edge was a nice touch. Not only uh, does it keep the uh, wind perpendicular to the, to the stand, uh, but it just gives it a nice touch. Um, I think that I'm gonna order, I think I'm gonna, once I get the uh, T-Track, I'm going to go ahead and put another one in the back and what I'm gonna do is just embed the uh, T-Track into it. Um, once I do that, I'm gonna end up with an end cap over here just to make it look nice. Uh, the wheels came out very, very nice, very functional. Uh, you can just lock up the, the uh, carriage and tip it back and dolly it whatever you need to. Uh, one, uh, something that I want to point out is that I did change the feet. Uh, that is nothing but a square piece of polypropylene with a bolt through it. And uh, tonight I'm going to be gluing. I have some um, inner tube patches and I'm going to be glu uh, gluing a piece of rubber to it just to give it a little bit of friction. Other than that, I'm very pleased with the project. I'm in it for about $50 if it was to replicate it. And uh, given the price of uh, things nowadays, I think that that is a pretty good deal. So my name is JC and this is the Guru Redneck DIY channel. 
signing out for now. I look forward to seeing you next Friday with a new project. Please support this channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Thank you.